discuss the topic SQL Query Builders, and we will break our presentation into several parts. And uh, if you will have any questions, we can have some time for you to ask them and we may discuss them. And let's start. So uh, uh, shortly about me. I've been working at SoftServe for two years with uh, Go. And currently uh, I'm occupying a Go, uh, middle Go software engineer position. Uh, and also I am pursuing my master's degree at Kyiv Polytechnical Institute. Uh, before working with Go, I had experience using Kotlin for backend development. Uh, I've been using Python till now as my secondary language. And uh, I used Java and C Sharp for some of my pet projects. So they're not new to me. Um, always interested in innovative technologies and fresh approaches. Uh, so, a uh, quick intro in the topic. Why do we actually need a query? Uh, some people may wonder why do we need it? And let's say we have a shop and we sell some clothes. Um, you could have multiple types of shops. You can have multiple shops. Uh, you can have groceries, medicine, mechanics. They have different sets of goods, products, and items. And returning back to our fashion shop, uh, let's say we sell jeans. Uh, however, we're trying to address every customer. So we have different sizes of jeans. We have different colors, cuts, fits, and models. Uh, the price range may vary and we may try to digitalize it uh, to create some kind of informational system. Uh, we need to store a data our data somehow, as most likely in reality, it's stored somewhere on paper or maybe in brains of salesmen, but it's another topic. Uh, so here we may see a simple uh, uh, structure of our server application. Uh, we get a request from the customer and our server may some kind of work on it and then it passes uh, the request to the data storage which actually has our data with uh, what we work but our um, data storage is not some kind of a magic box it doesn't really know what do you want and what do you need to store there uh, so for that to communicate with data storage relational database, you need a SQL query. Uh, so let's go on. And we may have some customer request uh, for light blue jeans with size M, slim fit, under 15 bucks. And he wants to, uh, for example, see cheapest first. Uh, here we have some clearly defined filters by user. Uh, a joint may be applied as well. Maybe customer would like to see a form like show me jeans that are popular with other customers, etc. Uh, some complications may arise when working with relational databases and SQL queries. Uh, your queries may become much bigger or more complicated. So it seems like we need to apply filters to the query or sort it, uh, you want to dynamically select the columns from the database and you want to keep simple, uh, keep, keep things simple and fast. And uh, the idea is to apply these filters in the runtime while you don't have predefined query because you don't know the customer's request. You don't know what he wants in that moment. Uh, your first option, may be using simple plain query. But as we discussed, it's rigid and it may not work for us. Uh, let's view some more dynamic uh, options uh, like Concat or Strings Builder. So Strings Builder is a simple option that is uh, available in a standard Go library. Um, 
but uh, here we see that we have some columns for select. Uh, on the right, we have parameters that are used in this query. Um, you can see that maybe we may uh, simplify our uh, right of columns a little bit using join or some other methods. Uh, we will uh, return back to it uh, on, on how to work with this bulky for loop. And going back uh, to the next page, uh, so uh, we see some where filtering. Uh, and here we need to store our arguments and to uh, track the indexing of these arguments. Uh, so which is not really pleasant for doing that. Uh, as well, we need to generate the list for our where in for each parameter. Uh, and basically, when you are working on it, you may want to refactor this bulky for loop as well. And it is it could be a waste of time for over-engineering your code to make it look better and more readable. And while doing that, you may produce the idea of processing it in uh, more elegant ways. Uh, that will give you uh, more flexibility by creating an object for that. So uh, here is like the output of our query and which is the same to the previous simple plain query. Uh, so you need to use train build each time. And as we discussed, you need to keep track of your arguments, which is not really uh, useful and not really pleasant. And most likely you would like to handle your object, uh, your query as a particular object. Uh, guys, maybe you have questions so far? I guess no. So let's continue. Uh, let's start, continue with builder button. Uh, basically, uh, String Builder implements it, and we used it previously. But let's take a quick look on it. The main idea is to build any object in your code dynamically, only using the options that you need. Uh, you build the base, the fundament of your anything of your object of your house first, then you move to the walls, then second floor, and then to the roof. Uh, at this point, you could have much more options to build your object, your house, uh, that you haven't used. So instead of using a constructor or which with empty fields, you used methods. Uh, so as we see in example uh, on the right side, um, builder could be passed and tossed around. Uh, it returns a builder after calling most methods. And you may have multiple builder strategies that will know what to build and how to build your object. But basically, it's a, maybe from your standpoint, doing the same. So here we're bringing up the idea of encapsulation. Uh, and here is a simple UML diagram, if you're interested in that, but the pattern is not that complicated. Uh, so uh, our query builders, uh, basically they are used mostly for generating SQL. They're simple, uh, although they have some additional features on board. Uh, they don't use any reflection, they don't use any pre-generation and they work uh, in a runtime. Uh, Basically, it's a library, it's a code. Uh, so you are working with a query expression. Uh, you may pass it around or you may style it for your code style and it may take much more space than just a plain SQL. Uh, they will not fully substitute the SQL and can support every expression of every database. Uh, Queries change dynamically at the runtime, but it's of course slower than plain query. And 
you may use it with your functions, methods. You may pass it around as an object. You may work with it in a functional way, whichever you like. Uh, so here I gathered some of the libraries that I found for you as an alternative. Uh, we can't cover every library in Go community. Uh, it has much more of them. Uh, but I had experience with SQL Builder. It supports the syntaxes of MySQL, PostgreSQL that we are using uh, on our project, SQL Server, SQLite, ClickHouse, Presto. Uh, and by the author, this library is better than Squirrel because it doesn't have constructs like the following, like EQ and just some kind of uh, a map. And the same, uh, it's like simple in its core. It just uses builder and arcs idea behind that, which makes it more extendable rather than squirrel. Um, any questions so far? I see no questions in the chat. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's uh, dive deep uh, a little bit into what API can give us and how we may use it. Uh, so here we have the same parameters as previously. And as we see, select became much uh, simpler. Uh, it doesn't select, uh, support dynamic select adding. For example, when you call uh, select multiple times and you just add uh, new columns, no, it doesn't work that, that way, but it works with where expressions. And as you see, uh, where expressions became a little bit easier to process. You just pass the parameter. You don't store your argument anywhere. You don't track the index of it that you need to do in po for Postgres. And uh, going back, uh, going to the next slide, uh, the where expression with the list became much, much easier to read because it uses this uh, SQL builder list that basically does the same job for you. And it does this job for any other databases uh, because we have this uh, build with flavor uh, for PostgreSQL. And uh, we can see uh, other uh, methods that uh, basically a SQL query or the by group by that you may use and if you like. And here is the result of the uh, SQL builder execution. But one small disclaimer, uh, this query was code styled by me by hands. Uh, it generates just a simple uh, one liner uh, to be executed. It's uh, not like a SQL Builder doesn't generate queries to be readable. It just generates queries. Uh, also, uh, you can use it uh, for inserts, updates, and deletes. API supports it. Uh, you can add uh, uh, and f generate multi inserts. Uh, you can add some columns, values. You can use partial updates uh, with set. Uh, you can uh, add filters for delete from. Basically, everything almost the same as for select. And here is the uh, like another example. SQL Builder allows you to create tables as well. But the most uh, important uh, here in this example is SQL method, which allows you adding any simple query, uh, SQL query uh, that you need and it's not supported by the API. Um, so it gives you like higher extendability and you can use it everywhere. Uh, and as for migrations, I recommend using other tools and approaches rather than this because uh, most likely you may use something just uh, more complex rather than create table. Uh, here we have an example of nesting. 
uh, with some subqueries. Uh, we have subqueries to select from, we have subquery to join with, and we have subquery for where. So uh, this uh, library allows you to cover such use cases as well, uh, because they are uh, quite useful in real life, as we see. Uh, we can't really use uh, our SQL without joins in everyday usage. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the benchmark and don't expect it to be faster than the standard library. Uh, don't expect it to be faster as Concat, as String Builder or uh, Plain Query, uh, but it, uh, there is some trade-off for better usability, for maybe better readability, depends on you. Uh, and the benchmark was uh, run on previous queries and not some big ones. And uh, for the usability, for the readability, uh, as we see, we can pass these subselects into uh, different methods. We can toss them around and basically we can divide our big query into smaller, simple subqueries. Uh, maybe some questions so far. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, I suggest to uh, move on to ORMs. Um, so we have different tools uh, for selecting the data and uh, ORM is one of them. Uh, we will uh, use GORM as an example. Uh, GORM GORM is not a typical ORM in comparison to, for example, .NET LinQ and the whole uh, .NET platform, but GORM has still its purpose and does the job well. So we uh, are diving deeper in the abstraction. Uh, SQL Builder only generates queries uh, and you need to choose the connection yourself. Uh, and the underlying driver as well. While GORM has built in, uh, so you just uh, use it and it generates and executes queries. However, you can customize GORM. Uh, with SQL Builder, uh, you have to write queries for read and write to the DB yourself. In GORM, it's encapsulated and you just use the API. Uh, but for that, you have models to define the tables and permissions to filter out the data. Uh, GORM API is quite different from the standard SQL and from the SQL Builder, which is kind of the same, kind of similar to the plain SQL. But unfortunately, it still needs SQL for web expression, the same as SQL Builder, uh, like its counterpart. And SQL Builder works faster. We shall see it later. Uh, here is the first example with insert. Uh, like uh, calling the GORM API seems simple. You just uh, use create method with connection. But before that, you need to create some model. Uh, of course, you may create the model for your uh, insert builder and Basically, you will because you need to toss that object around. But uh, here we don't really uh, cover the um, scanning of the object. It's a topic for another day. Uh, Gorms uh, does that for you as well. Uh, and we don't do that here. Uh, the next is update, which is kind of similar. You just call the uh, method in GORM uh, and you write the whole query for SQL Builder. Uh, let's move on to select. Uh, and with select, if it's uh, some kind of simple select, uh, we uh, don't have maybe some where expressions for our um, GORM counterpart. 
but uh, SQL Builder basically uh, works the same as I mentioned. We don't like really scan it here. You can use multiple uh, approaches here. You may use uh, some scanny. You may use something connected to PGX. Anything that you would like. Uh, Gorm doesn't really allow you that mostly. Uh, that's oh. yeah. So here we uh, have an example of Gorm using the filter, which uh, needs you to input the uh, column name and some additional maybe limit. Uh, so as we see uh, the uh, demos becoming more different now. And for subquery in join, uh, GORM becomes more bulkier. It uses plain select for joins, almost like we use it in uh, SQL Builder. But SQL Builder has its library for uh, like this equal, uh, less, more, and uh, keywords of SQL. So basically, most likely you don't need to use uh, just plain query. You build it with uh, API. And here is the benchmark. Uh, it, uh, I compared SQL Builder plus PGX versus GORM. Uh, as we discussed, SQL Builder can only generate queries. It can't execute them on its own. Uh, so you need some driver to execute the queries. As we use the PGX on our project, I decided to take it for this benchmark. Um, and the speed of execution may vary depending on your SQL DB driver. Uh, I used a repository that has benchmark for 15 ORMs and drivers. You may compare them with uh, the one you like or choose one of them uh, later. Uh, I slightly modified the PGX example, uh, the PGX, PGX benchmarks and added SQL Builder instead of plain query for PGX to compare it at least somehow. Uh, and for each method, as we see, PGX plus SQL Builder is faster and takes less memory and less allocations to execute. So basically, uh, it's kind of cheaper for you. You uh, need uh, cheaper virtual machines. You need less of them in case your demand is high. And well, that's a summary, but maybe at this point you have some questions to our previous part. Okay, let's save uh, the questions till the end. Uh, like to sum up, uh, you may use it for uh, select. Uh, where I use dynamic filtering for customers request. Uh, dynamic sorting. You may divide your query into sub queries uh, to make them much more readable uh, and pass them around. Um, also, you may use them for insert to uh, mul generate multi inserts on a fly or as well skip parameter indexing. Uh, you may use it uh, for update as well for skipping the indexing and handling the parameters. But uh, you may use it for patch-like partial update as well. When you need to add only some sets and they are not defined previously, they really dependent on the customer, on the user. And you may use it for delete, delete as well where you filter out the uh, query, uh, the uh, like records that you need delete, maybe by some ID, maybe by some date, uh, whatever you like. And CTEs. So for uh, adding some complex statements, you may use 
uh, SQL method, or you may use build F method to uh, construct these uh, subqueries, which are basically common table expressions, almost like it's as well topic for another day. Uh, SQL Builder is kind of faster than uh, GORM. It's uh, much more dynamic. It's uh, maybe, I wouldn't think it's easier to use, uh, but it depends on, really on you. Uh, if you need some customizability uh, with choosing your own drivers, choosing your own um, scanner or ORM or anything that you need for your project, uh, SQL Builder is, uh, it may suit, suit you. Uh, if you don't need some um, complicated processing, you may stick to uh, GORM or any other ORM that you uh, have chosen for you, for your project and for your team, uh, as it encapsulates almost all your requests. And do we have any uh, questions so far? It's like almost the end of our presentation. I wanted to thank you for your attention and for your time.